Welcome to Ageless by Rescue. This podcast is devoted to exploring the science of rejuvenation, uncovering the most trusted experts, the must-have products, innovations, and technology in the field of vitality, aesthetics, new beauty, and cosmetic enhancement. Hi, my name is Jules Robinson, and I'm on the latest episode of Ages by Rescue. Oh, I am absolutely thrilled to have Jules Robinson on the Ageless by Rescue podcast. What a gorgeous, beautiful guest to have on the subject that speaks to my heart, being perennially beautiful and um, vital. Hi, Jules. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. So we started this conversation a few weeks ago because I read that you had partnered with Jenny Craig to get uh, to your peak uh, desired weight by your 40th birthday. And a 40th birthday is such a milestone in a woman's life. Uh, I'm 47 and I really remember all the wishes and all the things I had in my head that were, you know, key for turning 40. I want you to take us through um, some of the things that like really matter to you and what 40 means to you. Yeah. Well, firstly, can I say you look sensational? Um, So yeah, turning 40, it is a bit of a big one, isn't it? Like I feel totally fine with it. Like I've always said 40 is a new 30 and, you know, we are so much more younger nowadays. Like I remember being at school and having a teacher who was probably 35 and I was like, oh, she was so old. And, but when I do look back at those pictures, we were a lot older, you know, and, and I think that we're just so much more younger now as well, you know, and I guess we all look after ourselves so much. But turning 40 for me, I always did have a bit of a, a dream and a goal to to want to feel my best and look my best when I hit 40. So that's definitely something for me that's really important and also because I want to have another baby as well. So getting myself you know, really strong and healthy again, because I've got to say, by the time I gave birth to Ollie, I wasn't walking, I was sliding by the end. So I want to feel really strong to do that. And I guess I just didn't feel comfortable to start trying again and, and to put on another 20 kilos for me, I just wouldn't have felt, felt, felt strong to do that. So, but turning 40, um, but yeah, there are a few aspirations. I always told myself I was going to, you know, travel for my 40th, but that's obviously not going to happen now. Um, so I think a, a really extravagant gift is, is definitely happening. But um, but no, I really, I think some, some in speaking to some friends who are around the same age group, they some people don't feel comfortable with it, but I 100% feel ready to, you know, for, as I said, it's just a number, isn't it? It's how you feel on the inside. And it's also how you look, because I, I can tell you, and I'm sharing this with you in the, uh, in the context of, um, you know, when I was a new mom, I had Lily when I was 36. And I can categorically tell you that I look younger and feel younger at 47 than I did at 37. Gee, and that's amazing. I, I improved all my youth markers. And because having a baby really changed me physiologically, emotionally, um, from a neurological point of view as well. And I felt like I wanted to recapture some of my energy, vitality. And when I went down that path, I actually caught myself. I, I, I bought myself like a, a decade of youth. Um, and so, you know, when I turned 40, I actually felt so much better than when I was 37. And now at 47, I feel so much better than I did at 40. And I think yeah, it's amazing. never too late. And it just depends you don't have to do everything all at once, but it is wonderful to be able to catch the things that matter to you. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you're so right. Like it, there is, you know, no right or wrong time to, to start implementing things to look after yourself. And 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 it, it helps in so many different aspects of your life when you start to look after yourself. But I mean, I still feel like I'm 25 years old, <laughs> but I'm I probably healthier. That question. I, I always do, say, but I'm probably what, healthier. how old do you feel? How old yeah. do you feel? I mean, I think also having a baby as well, it definitely brings out your playful side and your colourful side and, you know, you're more fun and you're, I mean, I'm literally an entertainer every single day. So that brings out a really fun element of your personality as well, having a baby. But I'm prob- I'm definitely healthier than I was when I was 25 because in your 20s, you're definitely out drinking more and partying, probably not getting enough sleep. So, you know, I'm probably a healthier 25-year-old than I ever was. <laughs> One of the big things that um, when I speak to anti-aging experts, vitality experts, 
uh, around the world, um, your body weight and your body mass is a huge indication of your life expectancy. And it's a health issue. It's not a vanity issue. Um, And you touched on it. You want to have the healthiest body possible to have another baby. And your reproduction is a, a function of your health and vitality. But also you're in the media and you're in the spotlight. Um, you know, you burst onto our collective consciousness on, on a show that was so much about how you looked and, you know, how you were perceived married at first sight. And you, you've you come from a background of hair and beauty, again, a, a very physically oriented uh, industry. But I love that you've made a decision to pursue your weight loss as a pathway to longevity and health and the ability to produce another life. Um, Yes, absolutely. And I think it's, you know, it is a really important conversation that, you know, going on a TV show like that, you know, I, I kind of wasn't, you know, the normal that was seen on a reality TV show as in like, I wasn't that usual, you know, size 10 to 12. Like I was a curvy 14, 16, really confident and that did come with a little bit of body shaming and a little bit of trolling for the way that I looked and I've never conformed myself to any narrative around what beauty should be like I very much I am who I am I love being a curvy woman but I also promote body positivity and it's really important message that body positivity is not about being overweight it's about being comfortable with your skin no matter no matter where you are and being okay with that but also knowing that that little tag inside your clothes does not define your purpose or your potential or your happiness. Like you really do. And, you know, doing Jenny Craig right now, like I feel great, but I've always felt great. And I've rocked size 12 to size 18 in the last three years from being pregnant postpartum. And I've always felt good about myself. Have you really though? Because I've also been lots of different sizes in my life, Uh, you know, a lot heavier. I'm, I'm a twig compared to what I've been. And As much as, and I'm sharing this from my perspective, um, and I guess I would, I'm really open to hearing yours. I didn't feel great when I was heavy. Yeah. I didn't yeah. love myself. I had a lot of confidence. I had a lot of bravado. I had a lot of things that on it, from an external point of view, you would have thought, yeah. oh, she loves herself. She's, uh, you know, climbing the mountains, kicking goals. But actually I, I, I've had a different experience with my with myself when I yeah. wasn't feeling that how I looked and how the energy that I had and the fitness that I had wasn't the girl that I was inside sure. and so I, I do sometimes question that and I, I don't mean to be disrespectful but no really, not at all really not at were all you happy? and the thing is I'm I'm such a curvy woman anyway that um no matter what size, you know, how much I actually weigh on the scales, I've got a booty, I've got curves, I've got boobs, I've got a bum. So I'm a very curvy woman. So I don't ever feel like, and I'm, I'm never going to be really thin and nor would I, you know, want to be, this is not the natural shape that I'm meant to be. So I've always just embraced my curves and my shape and dressed my body to accentuate that. So that's just part of my makeup of who I am. Yeah. And, and it's when part I of do your put brand, on- you know, it's part of the Jules Robinson sex appeal is that you are a knockout, <laughs> but it, it's true. And that's, it's, as you said, it's a look, a feel, an attitude we don't see in mainstream media. Yes. So I think, as I said, a lot, that's just always been me. And to go on a TV show like that, I did have to really show up and go, okay, people aren't going to like me. You know, not everyone can like you. I just have to be, I have to like who I am also and, and have integrity with my choices, everything that I do. And, and that's how you hold, you know, yourself. And I did that the whole time. And as I said, there were moments where it does hurt and it does. But for me, you know, fast forwarding three years on, all of it just makes me realize even more you have to like who you are. But to answer the question of have I always been comfortable and okay with it? Oh, when I had the moments of in that postpartum, when I did get up to about size 16, 18, you know, t- tornado jewels would arrive in my dressing room and I couldn't find anything to wear. In those moments, I would get a little bit frustrated, but I also had to be patient with myself and be like, it's just the quest of coming back to yourself, you know, postpartum. So there were the moments when I would get up a little bit like, oh, I just want to find something to wear. And you want to feel really nice. And then it's really frustrating because nothing fits you properly. So in those moments, I just always knew that I would eventually find the energy for myself again. But as I said, it's about working on yourself, you know, and your body is, you know, it is your body's purpose. It's not, it's not the be all and end all. And it's, 
Yeah, it, it's a really good question to say that because in my all honesty, having a baby as well just really does give you that new respect for your body and not to, to I guess, judge it so much and just be so grateful that what you've just created as well. Yeah. And what about when you were younger? Were you always curvy or were you athletic? Did your body change? And then, uh, you know, postpartum, you know, we all experience a postpartum body, but how, how would your journey of your body and how you experienced your physicality growing up? It's really interesting because when I was uh, a teenager, I was, I was very thin. And then as I got a little bit older, the, the hips came and I remember actually like bumping into things. Cause I didn't, you know, when you wear like a hat to the races and you have to learn your, your radius of where you are when you kiss people, my hips all of a sudden popped out. And I remember getting bruises on them because I just walk into no. things and wouldn't realize where they're growing. And I think um, I moved to London when I was 21 and I'd never had so much attention ever from men in my life because I did have like these curves and the booty and the small waist. And I just did never got that in Australia for some reason, you know, I, maybe it wasn't like the, the taste then it was like the blonde kind of surfy, the surfy girl back then I'm talking like, you know, 25 years ago. Yeah. Um, anyway, so moving to London, I, I just, I don't know, like I did definitely find a, a new, not that, you know, getting compliments gives you extra confidence. But, but it I remember, does. It does give you I remember confidence. it did make me feel like, oh, wow, like this is my body. So, and I think I just embraced it and and just work, as I say, work what you got. So, um, but you know what, it's some, I mean, people are really funny. Like I've had people say horrible things about my body and 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 face to face like um you know face like to face. yeah yeah I'm just like thinking back in my times in London I remember some guy was uh being a bit flirty at a bar and I just wasn't interested and and then he just turned around and said something oh you've got a fat ass or something like that and I was like oh well two seconds ago you were quite interested in that fat ass <laughs> you know so um I mean each to their own everyone knows what they like and what they don't but yeah, that's funny. You you work in um, media and and you've got a shapewear company, which is really really interesting. Um, so obviously your curves are your signature. Your uh, message of bo- body positivity is is ingrained into you know your your DNA. Um, I'm interested to to learn about what you learned in the hair and makeup industry and some of the tips and tricks that you've learned about enhancing your beauty and how how your style has evolved, you know, from your teens to your 20s to your 30s and now entering your 40s. Yeah, definitely. So I think I, I always knew my purpose in life was to make people feel really great, which is from painting my mum's face and doing a hair and makeup from when I was five years old. So I knew I wanted to be a hair and makeup artist. It's all I ever wanted. So I I obviously did that, did, had a really successful career in the UK, worked in Harrods doing bridal hair and makeup. And I did Napoleon training here. And in my training, you had everything from a year academy uh, from like theater to special effects. And it was very clear. I was there for the, the glamour side, you know, I wasn't, I was, I did it and I really enjoyed it, but you could see the people in the class who were there for the theater who just, that was where they shone. And so that kind of aspect of like the glamour makeup and all that was definitely my field. So going to London and doing that, I think I am, I mean, you look back at photos of yourself and at the time you think, God, I look fabulous. And then you look back and you're like, what am I wearing? (laughs) But I've never really conformed to any kind of, um, you know, like trend. I've always just kind of, I guess, a bit more classic, timeless kind of feature, you know, of fashion as well. Like things that just suit my body. Makeup wise, I've or hair and makeup, I've always loved big hair. I've always even if it's in or not I've always put old school hot rollers I love the classic Hollywood like the red lips I mean you um, are Jessica Rabbit you are the walking version of Jessica Rabbit you know, it's all her <laughs> that is my favorite hair. fancy dress costume is it well, there you <laughs> yeah go. I've got the dress and the cupboard and the, the purple the purple gloves so as I said I've never like of course you know you do move with the times of you know the brows in the 90s that was so thin like they've taken forever to grow back and now the thicker you know I do obviously follow trends in that way of what's fashionable, but I've always kind of, I guess, just worn what, what it makes me feel great, which is that very classic kind of Hollywood kind of look. And when I've met you, I, I'll tell you what my immediate impression of you was, is that, um, first of all, you're an incredibly beautiful woman. And secondly, you take up a lot of 
uh, energetic space. Like you, you have so much presence and that can only come from inner confidence. It, it is impossible. I've met and interviewed some of the most beautiful women in the world, the super supers, great actresses, and they don't always have that. And what was really striking about you and the reason I immediately contacted your management to, to have you on the show was you fill up a room with energy and positivity. And so it rings true. What you talk about oh, thank rings you. true. And I yeah. think that, you know, when you were on TV or whether you're, you know, promoting something or if you're on Instagram and I follow, you know, um, just the way you speak and you are, it, it does seem to be like you're in alignment with who you, you really are. And so I was interested with this partnership you did with Jenny Craig because, you know, it's one of the oldest brands in the weight loss space. And it's it's a particularly new uh, program. It's a fast fast program, um, yeah. and I thought, you know, if if Jules is aligned to it, it it's it's not a cut and paste deal. It, it, you've aligned to it because it, it, you seem to me like yeah. the type of woman who who really needs to be on board. What do you think? Losing, I think your goal is twenty kilos, right? By the yes. time you're forty, and you've lost yeah. what about ten kilos so far? I've lost about twelve and twelve and a half. Whoa. Yeah. It's a lot yeah. of weight to lose. Yeah. But, so I mean, you- and thank you for that. That really means a lot because, as I said before as well, like going on a huge TV show like I did, that's that was my game plan if there's such thing. I was like, have integrity with everything I do, all that I do. I did not think past my wedding day and everything else that's come with it has just been an absolute bonus. And I do have integrity with, with my choices. And that for me becomes my shield. It makes me not bulletproof, but it gives me a shield of, of integrity of who I am. And you're right. I don't do anything that is not hundred percent myself. And even with Jenny Craig, like I did do, I was on WW um, a couple of years ago, lead up to my wedding and I was an ambassador for them. Fantastic program because it suited that point in my life. And fast forward to having a baby, I just couldn't, I obviously thought about doing WW again, but I just was like, I don't have the mental capacity to, to count, to cook my own food. Like I just didn't. And my life is so much busier now than it was then. Mm -hmm. So Jenny Craig for me, um, and of course, public perception, people are asked, and I'm like, I'm an open book. I will tell you exactly right now. I switched to Jenny Craig because wholeheartedly it suits my life right now. I am so busy that I just wanted something to turn up on my door and I eat it and I get the results and have a consultation and they keep me on track. And then eventually I can weave my own food into it and, and, and learn to maintain again. So it is the perfect thing for me right now as a busy working full-time mom, full-time business owner. So just my circumstances changed. And I'm um, that is, and and thank you for that, because that is really, it is important to me that that people, you know, I don't just put my name to anything like this is a hundred percent the best thing for me right now in my life to get to my goal. So, and to get to that, the 20 kilo goal is just getting me back to where I was before when I first had Ollie. So, so um, you were 20 kilos lighter when you, when, yeah, when you were on the show. Yes. So, yeah. and and you were saying that you were considered curvy and like. Uh, oh, and it's just the thing. So, you know, I was 10 kilos lighter than I am now. I was body shamed. I was called fat. A few months ago, I was size 16, 18, body shamed, called fat. Like just horrendous. How and does then it make even you feel two- though? Uh, let me ask you honestly, how does it make you feel? Does it egg you on to stick to your goal or does Absolutely. it make you, or does it flip you yeah. the other way and say, take me as I am, this is it? Absolutely, it does. So, and then yesterday I did a, a, a video of me doing some exercise, and someone sent me a message and said, "You're really beautiful, but you're too fat." And I shared it because I was like, "This is." I honestly, hand on my heart, did not get upset. It just installs to me into my soul that you just can't care what anyone thinks. As I said, ten kilos lighter, I was still called fat. All that matters is how you feel about yourself, and. Yeah, call me fat, whatever. I, I'm okay with that. I, I never, you know, aspired to be some perfect, never been more perfect. I, it's just not who I am. I am, I just am who I am. And I'm just trying to be the best healthy version of myself. Someone thinks I'm fat, whatever. You know, you just got to, it does not upset me. Of course, there'd be moments when, say, you're having a bit of a down day, as we all do, and I'd maybe see something like that. Um, you know, I'm human. I'm, emo- you know, I'm an emotional woman. Of course it can hurt, but it doesn't, it doesn't affect, you know, my day. <laughs> you know? yeah. So, and tell me, you, you mentioned exercise, which is obviously a key thing. So, you know, you're, uh, 
uh, about to celebrate your 40th and um, you're on this program to get your pre-baby body back. What are you doing in terms of exercise? What else are you doing in terms of mindfulness? What are some of the things that you've really discovered help you be your most vital, rejuvenated, sexy self? Sexy self. So um, I I was really getting into going to the gym and doing classes. And then obviously COVID here, like, you know, and it's like, this is my life now. I go to the gym this day and that day, dropping all over the crash. And then obviously lockdown came. So lots of walking, taking my pram to the hills. And I actually, I love doing that with my son. Like it's just such a, I don't listen. I sometimes listen to a podcast, but then just being at, just silent. You know, that is really lovely to do like a really nice long walk with him. Um, so that's a good thing. But I've also been doing a thing called G-Pump, um, which what is, is G-Pump. So G-Pump is you get to go to all these different beaches around Queensland and she's even been to Tasmania and she's a little bit like, um, you know, like Apple, the physical, the new Apple series. Yeah. It's like that. So she wears like these cool leotards and it's the most awesome music and it's basically like a pump class but just using your own body weight and it's just really fun and it's a little bit of dancing and I find if doing that in the morning and having a bit of a dance around, like it just makes you feel quite feminine and quite sexy and even though you're exercising, it's just a really good way to start the day so that for me um has been wonderful and also having the energy to do that and to feel like jumping around and all that like it just does so much for your morale every single day to to start off you know that way so that's been a really good thing um you do any kind of meditation or breath work or stretches yoga anything like that in that in that space of things when I, I to be honest, at home, I've always really struggled to be a, a by myself exercise person. It's just not me. I prefer to be in, in, a, in a group environment. But this this G pump, <laughs> I just love it. Like I love dancing around. So that's a big thing for me. Um, so the yoga stuff, no, it's just like, as I said, I would go to the gym and do that. But for meditation, um, I do I, I do try my best to to, to meditate. And I even said, I know it sounds really silly, but the other day I came out and I was nursing my son to sleep. And I said to him, I feel like I meditate when I do that. Like, it's just such a beautiful experience being with your baby I agree. and just looking at them. And, you know, obviously there's no digital around you and you just, and sometimes it can take an hour sometimes to get your baby to bed. But I love that being so present with him and being just in silence. And I love that. And that just, for me, just brings me back down to calm because I'm, I'm a pretty busy person. Like I'm, I work really hard on my business. I work really hard on campaigns and things that I love. And so that little piece of time every day that I get really just, yeah, brings me down to earth. You know, one of the things that I notice about you and your personal style is that it is quite sophisticated and, um, and classic, exactly as you said. And do you find that you are are used to dressing older than you are and then you have like an off-duty kind of look that like really because looking at you now in the tank and your you know minimal makeup you look a lot younger than when I've seen you on red carpet or if I've seen you at an event oh really yeah very much so this it's kind of paired back and to me it's like a and I, I like that you know how you can play with makeup and clothes to to play with how you look but do you yeah. have do you work with a stylist or do you have like a, a go-to look that makes you feel great? No, I don't have like a particular go-to look, but I definitely the red lips for me. I just find red lips really empowering. It just makes me feel like it just pops my face, pops my eyes, pops an outfit. So red's a definite go-to. But regards to that, I never, I don't know, I've never thought, do I dress older than I am? I'm not sure. <laughs> Well, maybe it's because you're not wearing the red lip. It's kind of paired back today. And to me, it just looks like, like if I ran it, you, yeah, to me, you look paired back and fresher and younger um, because yeah. there's there's not all the glamour with it. And I, it's gorgeous. I mean, you look beautiful. Oh, thank you. But it I is think when you, like I, I used to always wear a black line, like in my wet line in my eye, and I did that for 15 years and I don't know what it was but eventually I just I think I looked at a photo and as you get a little bit older you know you want to look more youthful and that's making your eyes pop not bringing them down and I you know it made my eyes look smaller it depends on obviously the natural shape of your eyes but 
I just was like, okay, I'm not going to do that anymore. Like I'm at the age now where it doesn't do me any favors by putting black all around my eyes, Mm -hmm. you know? So it is interesting when you have a bit of a moment, because I mean, you can use the same things, you know, from 10 years ago. I mean, you've got to remember your skin texture is different. Everything, your your face is changing. You know, what worked for you then is not going to work for you now. So, um, yeah. Do you have a um, go-to skincare routine? Because you really have stunning skin, beautiful, glowing skin. What's your skincare routine? And what what do you do from an aesthetics point of view? Do you have injectables? Do you have treatments? Do you have facials? Well, no one has injectables right now, do they? <laughs> I was Badly no. Was like everyone's, everyone's faces are going to be around their ankles by the time we get out of this. I hear you, sister. I hear you. Yeah, I've had uh, like a little bit on my forehead over, over time, but to be honest, I haven't had that done for about 12 months right now. So, uh, and that's the honest to God truth. So, but um, I've been using CeraVe, which I have to say is. CeraVe is great brand. Isn't it? Mm. It is the most affordable, no frills product. And I went to one of their skin chats and the dermatologist said, wash your face morning and night. And I don't know why, but my whole life, I didn't, I just did it in the nighttime and it's made such a difference to my skin. And also using, I get hormonal breakout. It's no, like I'm nearly 40. It doesn't matter how old I get. I'm like, oh, can my skin every month, it just breaks out. But using uh, one of their cleansers, which is more for oily skin, I use that one in the morning and I use the hydrating one at the nighttime. That's been a game changer for me. And, and hyaluronic acid. Or... Yeah. Tell me about the yeah. serums and your. Yeah. Your so, re- yeah. So the hyaluronic, I'll use that every single night as well, um, which is great. I absolutely love that. Eye cream, uh, hand cream, get these chicken feet away. <laughs> you always tell the age of women by your hands, right? <laughs> I get feel them in my um, hands. So I cheat. Did you? Oh my yeah. God. Wow. Yeah. It's a game changer. Are you happy with it's the amazing. results? Yeah, it's yeah. amazing. It lasts for years and it's such a game changer. It's like you do lose fat on your hand. You do yes. use them all the time. And I thought, why am I getting all this other stuff done? And I'm neglecting my hands and I'm really expressive, but I loved it. It was, it, I recommend it all the time. I loved it. Yeah. The one thing I had to do to my face, which I was an absolute game changer from having the Pamela Anderson nineties eyebrows that I blame her for. They just, no matter how many serums are put on, it just didn't grow back. So I had feathering done on my eyebrows and it just so it takes me back to, yeah. Well, it takes me back to learning when I went to Napoleon makeup Academy, when we did, we're doing the theater and they were saying how drag queens are always really arched and round because that expresses happiness. And, you know, it's quite over the top and camp. And then you go to the theater and there's an evil character. They're really sharp and they're really shaped, you know, and it, it does, it, it gives an illusion of a, of a feeling when you look at someone's brows. And so having them done and, and feathered on, I just, I don't know, I feel really together when you wake up and you're like, okay, I've got eyebrows. It's all good. <laughs> And have so you that was defi- done because they're so beautiful and perfect? Have you had any kind of? I'm actually pack? in the middle of having. I took them out so I didn't have a lisp. I'm having Invisalign at the moment because that's your game changer um, for changing your ageless face. Yes. Well, I actually had Invisalign when it first came out of like 10, 11 years ago when it first came out in the UK, and I spent a lot of money on it, and my teeth were very. I call them little ferret teeth. They're quite crooked. And a lot of my friends are like, oh, they're cute. Don't change them. But I always wanted to change them. And once I did the Invisalign, obviously my jaw came out wider. My cheekbones felt higher. Um, people going, have you had your lips done? Never had my lips done. And it, it, it just changed my whole face. And when I was on a lot of dating sites at the time, a lot of men would go, are you American? Because obviously Americans are so known for their beautiful big smiles. And I'd be like, no. Anyway, fast forward to five years ago. I couldn't make this up if I tried. A dog ate at my retainer. My, I was at my <laughs> friend's house. A dog went through my overnight bag and ate my retainer. So over the last few years and having a baby, I don't know what the hormones when you're pregnant, my teeth just got so crooked again. And so that's been a little thing as well. I'm like, I'm going to, you know, hit my goal when I'm 40, going to look fabulous, have my teeth straightened again. So Do you have um, them whitened been, as well? I have done in the past. Yeah, yeah. they look really white to me. Fresh. Oh, well, there you go. Um, fresh. <laughs> would you ever consider surgery for anything face body boobs um I was having a chat on um the kids spot which I'm a co-host of and we were talking about boobs and I was saying how one of my girlfriends has just had it them done from after breastfeeding and obviously I would never consider anything like that until after I've had another baby but I was like would I be that person I'm like 
I used to always joke and be like, I could be a boob model. I could be a boob model one day. <laughs> and then you have babies and things change. I, I'm not ruling it out. Like that is something that potentially I, I would be open to that. I think if it makes you feel good and it makes you feel great to look at yourself and, you know, when you've, I mean, I know they're made for breastfeeding, but to look down and go like, I really, really happy with how they look that feels nice. So, and when you just see them change so much, like literally overnight, like if you want to have that pick back up then do that. So that's definitely something I, I wouldn't rule out. I'm not against surgery in any way whatsoever, as long as it makes you feel good. And in your years in the hair and makeup industry, have you picked up any tips and tricks that you, you know, you always pass on to girlfriends or you use on yourself that, you know, if you've had no sleep with Ollie, um, if you've been shooting or working all day and you just need to turn things around fast, what are some of yeah. your go-to steps to kind of make yourself look fresh and awake and healthy and youthful? Oh, eye drops, 100%. Eye drops are the best thing in the whole world. <laughs> so eye drops, number one. Um I'm actually like, I love Revlon Color Stay Foundation, just a little bit with a brush and even just not doing a full face, but just those parts that you need it, you know, like just if you've got little spots under your eyes, a little bit on your forehead, um, I get ready so quickly. So um, I'm not someone that spends a lot of time getting ready. And maybe that is from being a professional makeup artist for quite some time. But so definitely that a little bit of concealer, lip gloss, I've got about three lip glosses sitting around me right now. I've always got a little bit of something on my lips. <laughs> Love that. And what other little go-tos? The brow things are a big thing for me. I always say to girlfriends when they're not done right is if you get, you know, like a ruler or something, your brows should come from that bit here, you know, from that point of your nose, from that part of your nose up to there. That's where they should finish. And that shapes your whole face. And that is when I've done people's makeup before and just shown them how to do that themselves, they're like, oh my God, wow. Like it does transform your face when your brows are in the right spot. <laughs> and what about lashes? Do you do extensions or do you wear falsies or do you love mascara? I did lashes for the first time and the last time when I went on Married at First Sight because I thought, okay, they're going to be filming me from the moment I wake up and open my eyes. If I've got some lashes on, I'll feel a little bit put together. And I did it then, but I just didn't like how much they and in my head I was like have they fallen out or is it because I got used to them being so thick and I'm like no they fell out so I just didn't like them falling out so I just stick on just with glue I just stick them on with glue but they do make a difference right they really open up the eye oh I love I love a lash like I really do love a lash but it's funny because when I first started wearing them only a few years ago all the time and just wearing like a corner one and I think it's like having injectables or surgery or whatever and then eventually I'd be like, no, you like little ones because it's just a bit much. And then over time, I'm wearing ones that I can fly away with, you know, like you get used to how you look. And then I think it's very much the same with people that get a little bit too much work done because you just get so, you know, numb to what you're doing. And you're like, just keep on adding more. So, but no, a lash is a, it is a game changer for any look, I think. Jules, do you have like a, a body ritual that you do, like taking care of the skin on your body or uh, bathing and tanning? Um, because, you know, it's, it's always such a nice way to kind of treat yourself um, when you're looking after, you know, the fitness and the weight loss and the dieting. But we forget the body. Yeah, I, I love I love a tan. Like I do love a dark tan. I'm very naturally quite pale. So uh, having a spray tan was definitely one of my favorite things past lockdown. And now um, my husband's quite good at applying it, to be honest. He's, he's pretty good with the old fake tan. <laughs> um, but that's definitely something I do. Uh, a body blend is like coffee scrub before I do that. So scrub my whole body with that and then apply the tan. Um, and then just using the CeraVe moisturizer all over. I'm pretty simple. Like I don't do anything too extravagant myself. I use like a ball bristle um, body brush sometimes, like on my you thighs and my legs. Just, yeah, which I, I really enjoy and it's quite invigorating. So I do that. Um, it's about it really. And it how, about, how about treatments and facials and laser? Is Are there any of those things that you do as well? Because I think, you know, you're in the media you look polished. We only see, I guess, a more polished version of you. But I always like to uncover what are all the things that we're all doing behind closed doors? Yeah. Well, I shared what I did. I had um, my decolletage was very sun damaged and it looked like someone had got a paintbrush and gone like that with some brown paint. And I had a lot of um, damage on my chest and I had um, the Fraxel 
on my chest to get rid of it. It works. And it bloody hurt, I have to say. It really hurt, but it really worked. So now I'm very conscious of always putting, you know, 50 plus on my chest. Um, but amazing. Like it just makes when I wear a low cut dress, I just feel so clean and beautiful having it's one thing you and you look back and you're like, oh, I wish I looked after my skin. I always looked after the face, my skin, my face skin, but my body, not so much. I didn't look after it very well. So if I had my time again, I would have worn a lot more sun cream in my youth. When you get to your goal weight with your Jenny Craig program, and I'm sure it's going to happen well before your 40th, because you sound like you're fast tracking this and it's working really well for you. It's compatible for your body type. Do you have like a little, (laughs) yeah. Do you have like a little reward that you've kind of promised yourself or a a goal outfit, a goal moment, a swimsuit, a a piece of jewelry? I don't know. Have you got a reward set up? Yeah, I, um, I always said to myself, and this could be like a bit of a combined thing. Like I got there, I'm going to buy myself a Rolex, like a watch, beautiful watch for my 40th. And I think that's, I mean, everyone, it's a very generic kind of 40th, but it's a bit of a like, yeah, you've worked really hard. You've worked really hard for the last 25 years. You deserve to buy yourself something really, really special. And that's what I'm going to do for myself. Can I ask you, what would 39-year-old Jules like to say to 25-year-old Jules? Oh, 25-year-old Jules. Well, she was having a lot of fun, let me tell you. (laughs) Um, I would say to myself, just always remember to know who you are and who you are not and just always like who you are and be comfortable in your, who you are. I think there's a lot to be said about to, to knowing what you're not, you know, and what, and boundaries of saying, no, that's not me. And, and just, just being the best version of of who you are and getting to know who you really are and what you like and what you don't. And if you were to time travel and go forward to the eve of your 60th birthday, who would you like to be? And who would you like to see? What version of you would be there? Well, I'd be looking fabulous. That's for sure. (laughs) And something sparkly for my 60th. Um, oh wow that's a really fantastic question um obviously I would god how old will my son be oh he'll be like 20 he'll be doing me a speech um yeah just friends and family and all those significant people in your life that have just stood by you and had your back I always say with my husband if he doesn't have my back he has my hand and that's really important to have people like that in your life who you love and you trust and are always there through thick and thin so all those people I'd love them there was there a moment in your life where you really looked in the mirror and you went, I'm not bad? I'm, quite <laughs> um, I'm trying to think. I date me that moment. <laughs> I think it's really, you know, when you look back at a photo in your life, and I remember looking back, say, in, in my 20s, and I remember, you know, those insecure 20s feelings where you're looking at your body and you're going, oh, this needs to be better or I should be a different way. And then when you look back 20 years later, you're like, oh my God, I look amazing. And that just goes to show that it's, there's nothing wrong with your body. It was wrong, something wrong with your mindset. Mm -hmm. So, and that's a really, and I think if you can be conscious of that in your everyday with yourself and to be aware of that thought, I think it can help the way that you view your own body and, and talking kinder to yourself. So um to know do I have those moments when I've looked at most I'm trying to think if there was a moment where I'm like yeah still got it I do that all the time as a joke <laughs> like if I'm getting out I'd be like yep yeah, still got it and my husband's like you never lost it honey <laughs> that's the one to keep that's the husband to keep right yeah he does pretty well <laughs> well it was an absolute joy speaking to you and I'm excited uh, and um looking forward to seeing what you do next and I'm like wishing you the best with your goal it's a great goal and you're gonna smash it and I love that you've loved the journey as much as you know the destination oh thank you yeah it's really I'm actually working on a a clothing line at the moment just because I do have so many women who are always uh you know like you dress so well for your curves and that so that's kind of uh the next thing that I'll be working on in the future to launch that so it should be great Well, congratulations on everything that you've achieved. You are an ageless muse and it was an absolute (laughs) joy and honour to have you on the show. Thank you. On that note, I will take that compliment and I will run with it. Thank you. Have a great day. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please share and rate this episode. I'd love that. 